वेलकम बैक एवरीवन गुड आफ्टरनून सो फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल आई वांट टू टेल यू दैट एज इट इज रिटन इन द व्हाट यू कॉल्ड थंबनेल यू सॉ दैट डोंट मिस द क्लास टुडे राइट इट्स समथिंग न्यू टुडे अर्लियर what we were doing we were using the whiteboard and doing the classes so some softwares uh, which we are doing like access and that practical class we were unable to do that so whatever vertical uh, verbally i was doing so that um, verbally i made you understand so we were not able to do the practical classes so now i have started the open broadcasting so that you can see whatever i can do in my computer screen so any software any steps i can do i can explain you through there as well as i will also show you the tata edge class so uh, in the tata edge class how you uh, see in the school that same way we will start the tata edge class and uh, whatever content is there whatever videos are there so we will do that so meanwhile we are ahead of the uh, syllabus so whatever chapter we have already done we'll go through those chapters and uh, first we'll start with chapter 2 that is uh, i think chapter 2 is uh, learn to use microsoft access 2010 so straight away i will go to the um, tata edge class where we will we will see if any uh, content is there regarding this chapter so you see the video and whether the desktop sound is coming or not you just uh, tell me yes or no and if not no problem i can also see that so let me um, uh, move my screen a little bit and i make it smaller so that you can see the um, desktop so i have come to tata edge class so let me log in so we are in class 8 right yeah so we'll go to revision a computer we will confirm learn to use microsoft access chapter number 2 so let us see from first there are many videos over there so uh, let us play one by one uh, this is different content sorry saint joseph's convent okay we have come sign in Mm-hmm. 
so we'll go to class 8 computer science class in a presentation introduction let's go to introduction is this What is this? On uh, videos are not there. But it's showing videos. Why it is not play playing? I don't know. These are question and answers coming. Yeah, now it came. Let us play. Meet Mr. Ram, aged 65, a retired government employee. He wants to withdraw some cash. So one thing if you are watching in desktop and uh, a laptop, so it's not uh, will be it will not be difficult for you to watch. Uh, but if you are doing uh, sm uh, watching in smartphone, please make it full screen so that it will be easy for you to understand and see everything. Okay, so I will play it again. In order to gift a nice dress to his granddaughter. Let's look at the process he followed to withdraw the cash a few years back and in the current day scenario. A few years back, he had to personally visit the branch to withdraw cash. He had to stand in a long queue, write a check, present it to the officer and get the check and cashed after the officer updated the amount in the accounts book. Now let's see the process followed by Mr. Ram in order to withdraw the cash in the current year. He goes to the ATM, withdraws the cash and receives a message on his mobile after the debit. Did you observe the difference in the process of banking followed by Mr. Ram a few years ago and now? Computerization of banks and invention of new technology have simplified the transaction procedure. One of the major developments in the phase of computerization of banks is the introduction of database management system or DBMS. What is DBMS? What are its advantages? Let's find the answers to these questions as we move ahead. A database is a collection of interrelated data pertaining to a purpose or subject. On the other hand, DBMS is a computer program which manages a database effectively and efficiently by organizing the data in a systematic way. As we move ahead, we shall learn about DBMS, how it works and its advantages. Now, let's try to understand the working of DBMS. DBMS maintains a centralized database. Any change in data made at one place, that is, in the centralized database, reflects in all the applications associated with it. 
so as to avoid redundancy and inconsistency. However, DBMS supports the redundancy of data in cases where we need to maintain multiple copies of data. In such cases, the redundancy of data can be controlled to the desired extent based on the application using it. Now, let's do a comparative study of DBMS and a typical file processing system. A typical file processing system involves maintenance of multiple copies of the same data at different locations in the form of different sources. However, in DBMS, data is stored at a centralized location in a secured manner. In a file processing system, changes made in any data reflects in every copy of the data stored at different places. On the other hand, in DBMS, changes made in any data are implemented in the centralized database which reflects at all places or applications associated with it automatically. Controlling the redundancy of data in a file processing system is a very time-consuming process. However, in DBMS, it can be controlled or limited based on the requirement of data. Meet Mr. Ram. Now, let's try to understand the working of DBMS. Is a very time Let's explore the advantages of DBMS. In the current business world, DBMS has brought in tremendous change in the way data is handled and controlled. Given here are the advantages of DBMS. 1. Reduces data redundancy. 2. Controls data inconsistency. 3. Facilitates data sharing. 4. Enforces standards. 5. Ensures data security. Click each tab to learn more. DBMS is used to perform a lot of activities in many sectors. Data such as students' information, patients' data, information of books in library, etc. can be stored in the database. MS Access is one of the popular RDBMS or Relational Database Management System used to manage the database. MS Access helps us to store all the information under the file extension .accdb. The features of MS Access which allow us to manage data are tables, queries, forms and reports. Let's learn about each feature in detail. A table is a place where related data is stored. There are four components of a table, namely byte, data item or field, record and table. A byte is a group of eight bits which is used to store a character. A data item represents a type of information and is referred to as field or data element. A record is considered as a collection of data items representing a complete unit of information. A table is a group of all occurrences of a given type of logical record. Queries are statements which allow us to retrieve particular data according to the conditions and specifications from the multiple tables. Form is the interface for the user to make necessary changes directly into the table with specified layouts. Reports are an effective way to present data for the user. Answer the following questions by selecting the correct option. Once done, 
Click Submit. Answer the following questions by selecting the correct option. Once done, click Submit. Let us summarize what you have learnt in this video. Suppose your teacher asked you to be part of a group of students in charge of organizing a small program that would be held after a parent-teacher meeting. What would you do? Any such activity requires a lot of organization. In this case, perhaps the first thing you do is have a group meeting. There you would decide on the actual events that would take place during the function. Perhaps a song, a dance, a recitation, maybe a small play. Then you would have to decide on the order in which these events would take place, the people who would perform and what they would actually do. Once these are fixed, you would have the first draft of the program design in place and you would probably ask your teacher to approve it. After that, depending on your teacher's suggestions or various other factors, you may change the design in small ways to make it better. This is called fine tuning. The actual work of rehearsals, practice, writing scripts and speeches etc. can begin only after all these initial steps are done. The process of designing a database is similar. You have to decide on the things you need, organize them in the right way and follow a set of steps to design and then fine tune it. In this lesson, we will take a closer look at these steps. Microsoft Access is a Relational Database Management System RDMS, used to manage databases. Designing a database is an important process that requires time and effort. A good design leads to the creation of an effective, accurate and efficient database that stores data in exactly the way you want it and enables you to access it easily. Database design involves seven crucial steps. Step 1 identify the objective of your database step 2 identify the tables you require step 3 identify the fields you require step 4 identify the primary key or fields for unique values step 5 define the relationships between tables step 6 Evaluate your design. Step 7. Insert data and create other database objects. Now let us look at each step in detail. 
The first step in database design is to identify the objective of your database or the purpose for which the database will be used. For example, a database that stores stock quotes to help analyze market trends will be different from one that stores images to be used in advertising. You also need to determine the type of information you need to store as these would form your tables and the actual information you would store as these would form the fields within your tables. We will look at tables and fields in greater detail over the next two steps. The second step is to identify the tables you need for your database. For example, to design a library database, you would require tables on book details, book issue details, member details, etc. Determining which tables you should include in your design is one of the most challenging steps of the database design process. You will need to think carefully about the output you want your database to produce. The reports, articles, forms or pictures that you want to see. Then calculate backwards to find what you need to use to get that output. This is a difficult task. It is a good idea to first create an outline and sketch your ideas on paper. Analyze this and check for flaws. Make it as perfect as possible before you get down to the actual design. When designing the tables, keep two points in mind. One, the same information should not be stored in more than one place across tables. This means there should be no duplication of data at all within tables. This will prove advantages when you start using the database as you will only have to update information in one place. It will also reduce the risk of duplicate entries appearing with different information in case you forget to make updates everywhere. Two. Each table should contain information about one thing only. To use the library example again, you would have one table on book details, another on membership details, etc. You would not have book and membership details in the same table. This will prove advantages when you need to add, delete or change a table. As information is maintained separately, Modifying one table will not affect another. Once you have identified your tables, the next step is to identify the fields within them. The fields within a table contain facts directly related to what the table is about. For example, a book details table can have fields such as book ID, book name, book author, publisher, edition number, etc. Here are four guidelines to keep in mind when designing fields for your tables. One, there should be no duplicate field values across tables. For example, no two customers can have the same customer ID. 2. Each field should relate to what the table is about. For example, in a customer information table, all the fields should only contain information about the customer. 3. No fields should be created for derived or calculated data. 4. There should be separate fields for the smallest logical bits of information. For example, 
Don't create a single field for address. Instead, create separate fields for street, city, state and zip code. Once all the tables and the fields within them are set, you need to identify a field or set of fields that will contain unique identification data. This unique identifier is called a primary key. This key enables Microsoft Access to connect information stored in different tables. This field cannot be left blank and cannot have duplicate values in the table. For example, in a book details table, book ID can be the primary key. In this case, each book would be assigned a unique ID. Now that your tables are in place, you need to relate them to each other in a logical way. To do this, you need to define the relationships between tables. The relationships tell Microsoft Access how to bring related information together in order to create the report or find the answer that you are looking for. Tables are related by using the common fields within them. You have now completed your database design. But before you start incorporating actual data, analyze the design and try to spot flaws. Check to see if there are any gaps in logic, any field that would fit better in a different table, any relationship that has not been defined, etc. Refine the design making changes as required. Remember, it is easier to change the database design before you fill the tables with information. After completing the design analysis, if you are satisfied with what you have, then go ahead and add all the actual data to the tables. Your database is now ready for use. You can now create objects such as queries, forms, reports and data access pages. Let us summarize what we have learned in this animation.
Before the advent of computers, data was collected on paper and stored in physical files which were in turn stored in filing cabinets that often filled room after room with documents. To manage these enormous stores, records had to be maintained so that individual files could be located when required. With the arrival of computers, all this has become much simpler, not to mention space saving. Now most records are maintained in soft copy form and stored in computer databases. But what is a database and why does it require management? A database is merely a virtual space where information is stored. And the need for management is the same as before. We need to store information in such a way that it can be accessed easily as and when required. In addition, modern database management systems also enable us to perform other functions with the stored data such as perform calculations, create reports, etc. MS Access is one such database management system and in this lesson we will learn more about it. MS Access is a database management system created by Microsoft Corporation as part of its office suite of applications. It is widely used by companies, banks and other organizations to manage their information. It stores data in its own format and enables users to generate reports, forms, etc. from it. To use MS Access, you first need to locate it. Here are the steps you need to follow. Step 1. To start MS Access, in the bottom left corner of your screen, click the start button. Step 2. To locate MS Access from the drop down menu, select all programs. Step 3. To proceed from the drop down menu, click the Microsoft Office Suite. Step 4. Scroll down and click Microsoft Access 2010. Once you click Microsoft Access 2010, the MS Access screen will open. Let's take a close look. The page is divided into many sections. Title bar appears on the top and displays the title. The Quick Access toolbar displays commonly used commands. The Access ribbon displays tabs where various actions are performed. The navigation pane displays various object buttons such as tables, queries, etc. The status bar displays the progress. The work area displays the data on which the user is working. All these will help you to set up your database. The fastest and easiest way to create a database is from an existing template. Templates are previously created formats and MS Access comes equipped with quite a few of them. Each template already contains all the tables, queries, forms etc. that you may require to perform a specific task. Here are the steps to create a database from an existing template. Step 1. To locate a suitable template, in the top left corner, click the File tab. Step 2. The Backstage view will open. To proceed, click the New command. A set of sample templates will be displayed in a section titled Available Templates. Step 3. To choose a template, 
In the Available Templates section, select the sample template of your choice. The template you choose will be displayed in a pane on the right. Step 4. To name your file, in the file name box, type in the name of your choice. Note. MS Access suggests a file name that already appears in the box. You can retain the same one or change it. Step 5. Near the bottom of the template display pane, click the Create button. As you can see, MS Access has created a database from the template you have chosen. To start using the database, in the first empty cell, enter the value relevant to your task. To use other database objects, in the navigation pane on the left, select the object you want to use. In the course of your work, there will often be situations where you will not be able to find a template that serves your purpose exactly. In such situations, you will need to create a database from scratch. Such a database will be blank without any predefined structure. There will be no tables, forms, reports, etc. You will need to create all of these yourself. Here are the steps for creating a blank database. Step 1. To begin, in the top left corner, click the File tab. Step 2. The Backstage view will open. To proceed, click the New command. Step 3. In the Available Templates section, select the Blank Database option. A blank database will open in the display pane on the right. Step 4. To proceed, in the File Name field, enter the file name of your choice. Step 5. Near the bottom of the pane, click the Create button. Step 6. To save the database in a particular folder, near the bottom right corner of the pane, click the folder icon. Step 7. Your document library will open in a separate window. From the files displayed, select the folder of your choice. Step 8. To save your database within the folder, near the bottom of the window, click the OK button. Step 9. To create a table within the new database, near the bottom of the display pane, click the Create button. As you can see, MS Access has created an empty database with a file name of your choice. It has created an empty table called Table 1 and opened it in the Data Sheet view. To start using the database, in the first empty cell, enter the value relevant to your task. This auto-created table will function in much the same way as Excel and the structure will be created as you keep entering data. As you add columns to the table, new fields will be created with their data type based on the data that you have been entering. If you wish to define the table structures before you start using them, click the close button on the top right corner of the table. To design tables, you need to decide on the following. 1. Field names 2. Field types 3. Field sizes 4. Field properties 
Let's look at each of these in detail. Field name indicates the type of information that will be stored in the fields. For example, if a field name has a label company, the corresponding fields will store company names. Field type indicates the type of data that will be stored in the fields. Data types can include numbers, text, memo, date, time, hyperlink, etc. Field size defines the maximum length of the data that can be stored in the corresponding fields. Field sizes need to be set for both text as well as numeric fields. For text fields, the size can vary from 1 to 225 characters. For numeric fields, the size can vary from 1 byte 0 to 225 numerals to double 8 bytes. It is advisable to use the smallest possible field size setting as smaller sizes can be processed more quickly and occupy less memory and disk space. Field properties are used to control the behavior of the various fields. MS Access provides many properties such as field size, format, indexes, captions, decimal places, default values, validation rules, etc. Let's summarize what we have learned in this video. <coughs> so, uh, today we'll up to, uh, do up till here only. So, let me increase my size. So, uh, whatever video you saw, it's from straight away from the Tata H class. So, we have not seen this video from chapter 1 only. So, I played chapter 2 now. So, we'll, uh, chapter 2 and 3 both is included in this only uh, access. And about chapter 1, we'll see if any content is there that will play out uh, afterwards. So, after seeing this video, how we can uh, step wise along with the explanation I will do it in access so how I will do that uh, that also you can see if I show you now so I can open my access from here uh, So uh, I am I'm having Microsoft Office 2013 but your chapter is based on 2010, MS Office 2010. So we'll uh, work with uh, 2013 only but it's uh, near about same interface uh, and nothing is different. So whatever options are there in 2010 will get in 2013 also. So uh, we can create whatever uh, anything I do in this. So I think step wise we can do it here we can create the tables we can create a database so we can also work with queries forms and records reports so i think that it will be easy for you to understand as i do the steps over the software so now i'll close it so i think uh, i this class uh, you enjoyed this class and uh, this is uh, helpful than the uh, classes we did uh, before through the whiteboard so even I can write here anything and I can show you anything from here even if I want to show you some YouTube videos I can show you YouTube videos from here so regarding your chapter so I think you like this video so if you do like this video so hit the like button already I got three dislike I don't know why so if you do a dislike also no problem so not the every person is not safe 
some may dislike some may like so if you like that uh, so i have worked hard i have came through some new things uh, to open broadcast everything so that it's for you only so i don't have any problem uh, sitting in front of the camera and teaching you through the whiteboard but i have worked hard i have uh, taken out some uh, other motives so that you can uh, take the help of the tata age classes also you can see the video and along with the software i can show you how to work with that step by step so sometimes you are having problems or uh, i do not understand so it will be easy for you so if i do in front of you with the help of a software just like in the uh, classroom how we do same way we can do here so if you like that we if you like the process what i am doing today the new one so you can uh, tell me yes sir uh, if not then we can go back to the previous process how we were doing to the whiteboard so whichever you like you can comment in the section <clears throat> so it's up to you so if your parents also have watched that uh, if you have if so this to your parents also i think your parents will appreciate this the new way how, how i have started teaching you so and one thing I, every class i am telling you many of them have still not subscribed the channel i don't know why what is the problem and uh, because of that uh, you call and afterwards you comment that um, i have missed the class i did not uh, see the class so if you subscribe the channel you have to hit the notification bell so that you can get the notification of the upcoming class which i schedule every day so uh, before every class i schedule the class and if you have hit the notification bell you will get the notification you click on that video as soon as you get get the notification you click on the video and as, uh, as soon as you click on the video any time the video shows that what time it will start and beside that you will get a reminder button you can also click the reminder button so that your cell phone or your youtube informs you or reminds you about the class upcoming class so i request you everyone uh, those who have subscribed well and good those who have not subscribed many of your friends uh, you just convey this message to your friends to do subscribe and uh, uh, the new way what how i am teaching and a new way uh, how i am doing this everything so that they can also take the advantage of this so Yeah, uh, convey this message to your friends. Those who have not yet subscribed, many of them don't know that live class is going on. So I came to know that. Uh, I don't know why, uh, whether they are not getting the messages or something like that. So please convey this message to your friends, so that they get, they also get the advantages of the live class. Because I don't know how uh, how far this uh, lockdown will go. So. you have to do like this only and we will also continue like this so as soon as the school opens i think this live class will end but uh, i will al always upload important videos regarding your chapter it's not that it's useful for now only it's useful for afterwards after the school after the lockdown also when the school reopens after that also i will upload the videos regarding the chapters what i do in the school uh, what i taught in the class so if you have not understood that time you can watch the video afterwards so to get better understand everything so it's all for you uh, whatever we are doing and you can get other videos of my like my whatever i do what are my hobbies drawing painting art model making as well as sometimes uh, just like a bathroom singer i sing and those i upload so you will get some other uh what do you call it other stuff also in my uh, youtube videos i will keep on making new videos so whatever i think i can do i just make and just upload it so i think you will enjoy that so today i uh, will hang the class here so as soon as we'll finish the videos of uh, tata age we'll straight away do the practical class uh, uh, through what i told uh, what i showed you i will openly access software i will do step by step any problem you can write in the comment also we can do that according to way that way any problem you have not understood we can do the steps again so tata is doesn't give you the 
Uh, means we can show the see the video uh, repeatedly, but uh, if we are having problem, they will not explain that. So here we can do with the software, and we can I can also explain you what is the problem. Why you are having problem? We can do repeatedly. So hope you like this video, and uh, we'll continue with the next. Uh, and uh, one more that uh, you got the uh, craft I have sent. So. Many of them are asking what materials are required. So I have given in the description box whatever materials you are required. You can see that. So you can decorate by yourself also. You can color according to your way. If you have some more innovative ideas on that, so you can use that also. It's up to you. Uh, and so and also you got the new timetable for your Dozo app. Uh, in the Dozo app uh, about the new timetable today is. Uh, Today is Wednesday. So your next class is on Friday. The timing will be same, 1 p.m. But, uh, it will not change. So till then, bye and uh, give my thanks and regards to your parents for their uh, support and cooperation, what they are giving us and, what they are, uh, and for their appreciation, what they are appreciating us for what we are doing. So whatever we can do from sitting at home, we are doing that. So see you on Saturday. Any problem you can write in the comment section. I see my comments every day. So any problem we can sort it out there or we can remember that points and in the next class you before the class starts you just write in the comment section. I did not understand this. You write your problem. So we will tackle that. Okay, till then, goodbye, stay safe, stay healthy, eat healthy, study and enjoy your holidays. Bye, love you all.